they're going to be pairing drivers who originally drove cars with the cars that they drove. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Todd Brown, That Racing Show. Thanks for dropping by for this pit stop segment. Talladega weekend. Man, love this racetrack. One of my favorite tracks on the circuit. And uh, we're going to be talking about that and a whole lot more in this episode. But first, I want to start out right now by saying, if you're a fan of NASCAR nostalgia, NASCAR history, collectibles, I've got an episode coming this weekend that you do not want to miss. Something I really look forward to sharing with you. So if you've yet to subscribe to this channel, hit that button down there right now because it's something that you are not going to want to miss. Now, let's talk about the action that's taking place off the racetrack this week. The announcements, a lot of things coming down the pipeline, starting out with the IROC series back in action. Ray Everham, Rob Kaufman taking over the series, getting IROC LLC, getting the cars, everything. Man, they are back at Lime Rock. And this is going to be a cool exhibition event on July 19th and 20th. It's going to be part of the Speed Tour All-Star Weekend. And what's cool about this, they're going to be pairing drivers who originally drove cars with the cars that they drove. So it's going to be interesting to follow this, see what drivers do get back out there and get in these cars and uh, what happens with this. Really looking forward to seeing where this series goes. And uh, hopefully they're able to get back on the racetracks and uh, make this event come back to life. But here's what else is cool about this. If you yourself own an IROC car, you can fill out an application and get out there with them. You could be out there on the racetrack with these guys. So, I mean, what's better than that right there? Buying the car and then getting to run with guys who used to race them. That's a once in a lifetime experience right there. So something cool for people who do own these cars. And also another cool aspect of this, they're going to have cars throughout all the generations out there from 1973 to uh, 2006 so july 19th and 20th summer plan a vacation go out there and have fun and uh relive some old memories part of this all-star weekend out there now on the flip side of this the srx series obviously something that ray Everham was part of before don hawk put out a tweet this week and um led some some talk right there with uh series is back he said you ready for one race two races maybe four so Something that's going to be interesting to follow with that right there as well. But, man, I, I love the fact that these, both of these racing series are coming back and uh, just not going away like so many series we've seen before. But, anyways, let's get to Talladega now with this weekend and uh, some wild news. A lot of names getting into cars this weekend. we got to start out with this announcement right here. Cody Ware making his return to Rick Ware Racing in at number 15 this weekend. Cody, of course... Coming off a suspension, uh, he got suspended last year for some assault charges that uh, were later dropped. Apparently, the accuser also got some charges uh, herself and uh, failed to cooperate with the authorities and everything else. So charges were dropped, and Cody was reinstated by NASCAR in December after missing 29 races, and he's making his return this weekend to Talladega. Now, this is Talladega. This is a track where anybody could win, so... Imagine that headline. Imagine that story. Cody Ware comes back from a suspension and gets his first win at Talladega. That would make headlines everywhere. So uh, I'm not going to put my money on it or nothing. But it could happen. But uh, interesting to see this happen. And also Shane Van Gisbergen getting out there for the first time on the Oval in the Cup Series. And uh, what better track to make your debut on Oval but the super speedway of Talladega where anything can happen. So... Uh, Wishing Shane the best out there. And again, this is another race he could win. Who knows? Talladega is always a gamble. But the one thing about Shane, he's done really good this year on the super speedways and the Xfinity car. Come right out of the gate at Daytona with a 12th place finish. Followed that up with a third at Atlanta. So uh, adapted really well to these cars and uh, wishing him the best out there. As well as all the drivers. Want to see everybody do good. Have a good race. Don't want to see the big one. I want to see some good racing all the way down to that checkered flag. Now let's move on to the Xfinity Series right now because there's a couple names in the Xfinity race this, uh, this weekend that are not regularly part of this. And uh, first one i got to start with is Jeffrey Earnhardt making the second start of the year for Sam Hunt racing at number 26. And uh, Jeffrey, at the first start at Atlanta, come home with an eighth-place finish for this team and ran in the top 10 most of the day. Sam Hunt racing has been strong this year. So if you know 
Jeffrey Earnhardt's history at Talladega. He's a strong contender, so I could see him getting it done this weekend. Obviously, got out there in that RCR number three, sit on a pole, almost got that win, and uh, man, I would have loved to have seen that happen, but would love to see Jeffrey get his first NASCAR victory this weekend as well. And also announced Jeffrey's going to be in the truck at Charlotte Motor Speedway over Memorial Day weekend. So good to see Jeffrey getting some races, getting back out there, and uh, look forward to seeing where he's going to finish. But the other name that's entered into this weekend's race is Matthew Benedetto, getting back out there in that 38 car. And if you know Benedetto at Talladega, that's where he got his first win in the truck series a couple years back, and uh, a few years back, almost got that first win in the cup race so another name to follow this weekend because again this is talladega and anything can happen out there now switch over here to the cup series because a lot of people are talking about ford expecting ford to be really strong this weekend and i have to say if there's going to be a ford out there that can pull it off it's got to be brad keselowski brad getting six wins in the past there at talladega speedway and uh, Brad is he's just very strong there. His last win was at spring of 2021 and uh, turned that team around. So I could see that six and that 17 up front battling for the win. And also got to throw out Joey Logano. I see him as the sleeper winner. I shouldn't even call him a sleeper winner, but after the year he's had, I can see him really rebounding this weekend at Talladega and uh, in strong contention for the win. Now, the other manufacturer pretty wild to think about is toyota right now because toyota has not had a win on a drafting track like this with the next gen car and that is crazy to even think about as strong as toyota is this year just mind-blowing to think about that but in fact toyota has not won at talladega since 2021 with bubba wallace so uh, of course that was a range shortened race but still that was a win for bubba wallace so you got to throw bubba's name in there he's strong this year Always strong on the speedways, so and there is a lot of names that could pull out the victory without any mishap or you know, ten cars finishing the race. So a very interesting race that we're gonna be paying attention to this weekend. And also, man, the guy who's got the momentum right now, Chase Elliott. Chase breaking a forty two race winless streak last weekend at Texas. Chase having really strong momentum right now. Three top tens, a fifth at Richmond, a third at Martinsville. And then the win at Texas, and uh, Chase is back. Chase suffered that broken leg last year, and uh, I know that takes a lot out of you. I, I personally, I broke my I broke my leg racing, so I know how much a re- rehabilitation, how much it takes out of you to get back into your groove. And obviously, it took Chase a little while. And the ironic part, his last win was at Talladega in 2022, before that 42 race winless streak. So uh, Chase obviously. Going to be strong there. He's got a couple wins at Talladega, so I'm really looking forward to seeing him have another run, expecting him to have another strong run this weekend. I want to follow up with one other thing about this because this goes back to the broken leg deal. I'm a little history for you here in case you didn't know, but uh, Chase's dad, Bill, also broke his leg, same place, and um, Bill come back and won two weeks later. So Chase had a little pressure on his shoulders there, taking uh, 42 races to get back into victory lane, but I'm sure he's happy to uh, make that happen. But Bill, yeah, Bill broke his leg 1985 at Rockingham Speedway. And a couple weeks later at Atlanta, Coca-Cola 500, had Jody Ridley over there as a relief driver. But yet Bill stayed in that car and went out there, got that win. So uh, some great comeback stories for all these guys. And I just love the fact I just got to say Jody Ridley because – that's just that's great right there in itself. I'm outside filming today. Brought my green screen out. So if you see a bug or something falling on me, that's what it is. But too beautiful a day to be inside. But anyways, hope everybody out there is having a great week. And man, like I say, you got to check out this episode that I'm bringing to you over the weekend because uh, if you're a fan of NASCAR nostalgia, you don't want to miss this opportunity. Once again, hope everybody out there is having a great week. If you haven't subscribed. What are you waiting for? Hit that button right now. And man, as always, we'll see you at the checkered flag.